All right. Okay, it's 12 noon now. I think we can get started. This webinar is being recorded. My name is Christy Padron. I'm a librarian at the Florida Atlantic University Libraries. I'll be a host along with Tanessa Callanan. And also Larry Mello will be the librarian in instruction and engagement services who will be presenting the content to you all today. Today's workshop is Library Research 101. It is a 50 minute webinar uh, for any FAU student, staff or faculty along with anybody at the Palm Beach State College campus at Boca Raton. Today, what you'll be learning are ways to identify the basic services of the FAU libraries. Larry will be talking to you about those. He will also help you learn how to find books and library information sources through our library's catalog and OneSearch. And finally, he will describe how to get help with using the library and its information sources. Just for some additional housekeeping information, if you have any questions, you can direct them to the chat. I and Tanessa will be monitoring the chat and we'll let Larry know if you have a question. And also in terms of your participation, you can receive a certificate of attendance by getting a certificate. At the very end, we will give a link and a QR code to take the 10 item quiz. And don't worry, it's all going to be stuff that Larry had covered and things you can find through the FAU Libraries homepage. If you score eight out of 10 of the questions, 80%, you will be sent a certificate of completion. You can also repeat the quiz multiple times if you need to. All right, so as I'd mentioned, if you have any questions, feel free to bring them up in the chat and we will let Larry know when, uh, when you have your questions. Otherwise, I will pass the baton to Larry and stop the share. Well, thank you, Christy. I'm going thank to you. share my screen right now and bring us to the library's homepage. Good morning, uh, or should say good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar on research, Library Research 101. Um, what you are looking at right now is the library's webpage, the portal to all electronic resources and services that are offered at the library. Uh, one quick resource uh, service I want to point out, since it seems to have popped up on our screen, whenever you are on our library's uh, uh, web pages, you'll notice this little red tab says Ask Librarian. And it, it'll pop up from time to time, or if it's closed off, you can simply click on it, it'll pop up. Um, what this is, is so you could actually chat with one of our, myself, one of my colleagues in the instruction engagement department. We currently man virtual chat uh, hours, uh, reference hours between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday through a service called Ask a Librarian. At 5 p.m., the service does not stop, even though you will not have access to one of the FDU librarians. We are part of a statewide service called Ask Librarian, where you can, um, librarians from various uh, universities, so it, be, so it can be UCF, FIU, University of Florida. Um, if you have a question, you can go onto their chat and you just simply click chat now. You can either stay anonymous or put in your name. Uh, we have affiliation. And the reason why we ask for the affiliation is because we do also service Palm Beach State College students and they have a different set of databases that we can access for them if they're trying to access and use them remotely from anywhere off our campus. Um, as, and as well as other. And then basically you input your, your chat question. The nice thing is, is when between the hours of nine and five, when you're working with one of us, we have a, we can share our computer screen either via ch uh, through chat or we can do a Zoom session through uh, Ask Librarian. And we can help you uh, navigate the resources. It could be a very complex question and how do I access a certain database and use it? Or to simply, but hey, what time is the library open to? And we'll answer those questions as well. The nice thing is if you don't need to chat with one of us and as things does pop up, just click there and it goes away. Just know it's there if you need our help. Um, this is the library on the web, as you can see, but the library also has, we're also physically located on our various campuses and from the library's homepage, and you may have seen an image, a few images on the opening slide, but if you scroll down the homepage, you can see our locations. We have a Jupiter campus, HBOI, Harvard Branch Oceanography Institute, a Fort Lauderdale campus, and a David campus. Um, in our catalog, where we, I be, we'll be demonstrating today, we have act, the catalog has access to the Jupiter and HBOI campuses. The other campuses use uh, 
go through Broward County. So if you want need any information to stay on the Jupiter campus, just simply click on the image. And then you know, you're on, and you'll notice it does look similar to the Boca uh, image uh, page, but it has information relating to Jupiter. So just as an FYI. Oh, no, do not need it. questions from Ask a Librarian. Thank you. Other services that you have at your disposal is, um, if you go to services, you'll see a, a standard list there. Um, one of the important, and there's many, I can click on services, I'll take it to you real quickly. And you can see, scroll down and see various uh, services that you have access to. Um, one of the important services I wanna point out to is Interlibrary Loan. And I'll show you where the icon is on the home page when we go back there, but click here. Interlibrary Loan is a service that will, the department will, if you cannot find a resource through FAU, be it a physical book, uh, an electronic journal article, maybe it's a DVD or um, a conference report, whatever the resource may be, if it's available, Interlibrary Loan will attempt to track it down and uh, look for it um, via their means. We partner with many libraries around the world, and I do uh, emphasize around the world, they will go to the ends of the earth to track down a resource for you. And the majority of the time, it's at no cost to you at all as FAU students. And if you have an account, you can scroll down on the, their main homepage and log right in here, place your account. Typically, books take anywhere between 14 to uh, 24 days, depending on where they're located at. Um, if it is a resource that is uh, in the state of Florida, in the state of Florida, excuse me, um, it can, usually gets here within three to five days. Um, if you do not have, apologize for this, um, have an account, just simply create, click on create an ILL account. It'll take you to the um, page that talks about uh, copyright and gives you their basic office hours and, and phone number. But just simply click here, create a profile. Um, the one, most important thing um, is scroll down, you'll see right here, FAU campus delivery location. Make sure you select what campus is your home campus. So that way, anything that comes to you, addressed to you um, that you put requested, if it's a physical item, will go to the right campus. Um, it's a simple process, um, but if you never need to use it, hey, that's fantastic. Just know it's there as a service to you as FAU students. Another service very important to students is our printing service. So, Scroll down to printing. Oops, I apologize. Let me do it this way, everybody. Yeah. Printing services. We um, our printing services are cloud-based as far as being able to upload our resources. So if you're sitting in the physical library again here on Boca Raton campus, and you're using any one of our uh, desktop computers, when you hit print, it will go to the cloud. Um, all FAU students have a print account that's all based and tied to your FAU Net ID. Um, what that means is when you're sitting at one of our computers and you hit print, it goes to the cloud. You can go to one of any print station, print, st uh, print release stations uh, in the library, and we have them on various floors and computer labs. You log in using that FAU Net ID, the same one that you did at one of our computers, and it finds only your work. And then from there, you can click print. It will print um, for both um, black and white and color. Black and white is eight cents a page, color is 30 cents a page. Um, the nice thing is also you can print from your laptops um, via the, web, uh, the printing web page. And if you go down on from this page here and you go to FAU Printing Services, and you, you click on here, this will unlog, then log in. It will allow you to um, do a couple of things. One, put money into your account. In the library we and on the Boca campus, we're the only um, unit on campus that has cash to account machines where you can actually put cash money uh, in increments of five and one dollar bills and any coin except for pennies onto your account. Or if you choose, uh, so choose to use or prefer to use a debit or credit card, you can do it uh, this web page. And you just simply click here, log in. And also from here, you can upload documents from your uh, laptop as well. So you can print from your laptops. So the nice thing is to say if you're in a dorm or you're living off campus, you can access this webpage, upload your documents from home or wherever you're living at, 
hit print, it will go to the cloud and be stored up to 12 hours. Then you can come into the library, go to a print release station and access your uh, printed documents and print them up. So go back to the homepage real quick. Again, there are other services that you have at your disposal. There's uh, a lot more that you can, at your leisure, go back and take a look at what they, uh, we have access to and what you have access to. Um, so what I want to uh, point out first is how do we do a search? There's many different pathways to finding resources. Um, as you can see from the library's homepage, uh, we have four, uh, four tabs along this large blue uh, search box. One search, one search is like Google, where you can find access to journal articles, physical books, eBooks, conference reports, uh, streaming video, anything that we have access to as, as an FAU resource, you can access through one search. Also, you can do a smaller search if you're looking just for uh, books, DVDs, streaming videos, and um, eBooks as well through the catalog. Journals tab will allow you to look for specific journals. So say the Journal of the Harvard Business Review or the Journal of American History to see if we have access to that. And the databases, which the databases feed into one search. So if you wanted to do a more unique search, a smaller search in an individual database, you can access that through that means. And I'll try to demonstrate through the end if we have time. So I'm gonna use one search as an example because I wanna show you how fast it is. So openly, I'm going to type in media uh, media as my general first term. Hit enter, or you can click on a magnifying glass here. You'll notice it says everything, so that lets me know I'm searching everything that we have access to. And you can notice we have over 14 million items. That's a lot of items to sift through. So, uh, so from here, how do I begin to narrow my search down? Well, one thing, obviously, I know media is a very broad uh, subject area, maybe I want to focus on violence in the media. Unlike Google, where I can put in a very detailed question, uh, one search, our databases, the library catalog in the library world are not up to the, up to the same speed as Google yet. So we use uh, subject terms or keywords, and we use what we call connecting words or Boolean terms, and or or not. Usually uh, uh, for the most searches, and will be sufficed. So I would say media and violence. And what this is gonna tell the system is I wanna search for everything dealing with media and violence as they're related together. You know, hit the little magnifying glass. Oh, it's updating, let me see the diamonds there. And just by adding another keyword, you'll notice it dropped down to 668,000. Still a very large uh, topic pool. Again, I can narrow it down further. And then maybe this time I wanna add another subject term and we'll say children, because that's a very hot topic today and, and how the media and violence that it, the media shows affects our children. Hit the magnifying glass. Now we're down to 341,000 items. So. You, as you can see, an article, so anything that is considered a journal article of that nature, it says article. You can access books through one search. And as you begin to scroll down, um, but again, there's a lot of resources here. So where do I begin to, and to really narrow this search down even further? If, you, if any of you have used things like Amazon before, you know there's they have limiters, so like four star, five star, uh, five star, four star, prime, things like that. Well, we have limiters in the library world. I can limit to things that are just on the shelf. Maybe I just, I'm working remotely or all my, all my courses are online and I wanna see what's just available online that I have access to. Open access is just what it says. Anything that's open access does not require a login. Or maybe I just wanna focus on peer reviewed journals. So maybe my professor says, I want, I need, on this particular topic, I wanna to see just peer reviewed items, peer reviewed articles. So I can click here, apply the filter. And you'll notice it dropped down to 188,000. Um, a little bit more uh, user friendly. A few other things I can begin to do also is I can go resource type. So in this case, anything that's considered peer review is coming from our journal, uh, journal articles, there's reviews, conference proceedings. So you can see there's um, a very a good list of different resources you have at your disposal. I can narrow it by subject. 
So maybe I want to see how it's affecting us more specifically looking at in, in the world of politics. So I know we have a pol uh, political science major out there. So I'll click this as a subject, apply the filters. So now I, I'm looking at again, uh, items dealing with media, violence and children, peer reviewed and politics. And you can see it begins, it drops down to 15,000. Um, and the last thing I would recommend is a, um, a, is a creation date. Um, uh, I, as a history major, a historian, we worry more about the dates of the events happening, not so much when the dates of things published. Um, but you might be in a course where your particular project says, I only need things published in the last 10 years. So from here, I can go to creation date. And obviously, we're going to move it forward. I can either um, change it this way. I go to 19, oh, excuse me, 2012 to 2022, hit refine. And now I'm looking at things published in the last 10 years. So where do I begin? This is where you as an individual, the researcher, can begin to look at the titles. And you'll notice keywords are beginning to be highlighted. Um, and as you start to see a title that might touch, catch your interest as you scroll down. So let's see. Maybe we'll look at soft targets and uh, missing women. Maybe that's a my area where I'm taking my research down. I simply click here. Now it doesn't open you right into the article. What it's doing is it's taking you to the, the catalog record page for this article, right? You have the title. It's telling you where it's published and coming from. It says it's available online. You'll see uh, what, a few things that you can do. If you want to send yourself, if you don't have time to look at the article or access the article, um, you can. I, what I would do is you can email yourself, and what it will do is email the link to you of, of this record that you can access later. Um, you can also create a citation. Maybe you just, your professor just wants you to create a, bibli a running bibliography of the resources you find. You'll notice it gives you MLA 9, which is the newest one for MLA, APA 7, and my favorite, Chicago. <laughs> so as you can see, there's, there's different formats and where they look. So from here, depending on your citation style for your particular course or uh, program, um, those are the big uh, three. Um, and you can simply copy and paste. One thing I will say is if something doesn't look right, definitely double check it with your citation style manager because these aren't always 100% perfect. But now that I have our citation, I want to look at the article. If you scroll down, you'll see view online. And there's, this is the database. Again, like I said, the database is feed into OneSearch. This is coming from Taylor and Francis, Social Science and Humanitarian Librarians, Library, excuse me. Um, before I click on that link, I want to uh, scroll down a little bit further and show you what's here. We have details. So it tell, again, tells you the author, the title, uh, where it's coming from. This little, uh, where it says description, for those who don't know, most articles will provide you a abstract or a synopsis of the resource. I um, can't stress enough on how important it is when you when those articles who do provide this uh, valuable resource to take advantage of it. Read through the abstract of the article you're tending to open up and look at, because if it doesn't uh, feed or doesn't uh, fit your interests or doesn't fit the scope of your research project, move on. Find the next article. Don't waste your time reading, in this case, a 10-page article um, and realize that it had nothing to do with your particular topic. Plus, uh, Larry, I have a, oh, I'm sorry. When you're done, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, well, before I click on the, the database, uh, what's the question? Uh, one person wants, you, wants to show how, again, you got to the citation. Okay, sure. Thank That's, you. No problem. So um, once you're in the resource, um, so let me go back so I can show you again from one search. This was the article that I'm using as my example. So I'm clicking on the title. This is not the article itself. This is, it's not even in the database. This is the catalog record of this particular article. And from here, you'll see under where it says send to, there's a nice little uh, set of quotations, mark citation. If it's not open, like, because previously I had opened it, it will open up and then gives you MLA, APA, and Chicago. Those are the big three. Also provides you Harvard. Um, if your particular citation style, and I know there are many that are uh, out there, but they're not the ones considered the, the big three, uh, MLA, Chicago, and MLA. 
uh, definitely uh, look up a site up your citation style guide um, as needed to fit your particular citation. And it's just simply copy, copy, and then copy it to the clipboard, put it on a Word document, and it's yours. Okay. Good question, Christy. All thank right. you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. So now I want to access the article. I'm going to click on Taylor and Francis because this happens to be the only database that is um, accessing the article. Now, sometimes I will say there might be more than one database, and I'll try to find an article that has that option. But if there is, then if it gives you more than one database to click on, then it becomes up to you as the user as to what um, the look and feel, because each database, as you begin to use our databases, have a distinct look and feel to them. So we'll click here. Now, if you haven't logged into the system, this is uh, you'll, you'll be prompt to log in. And the reason why um, you we're having you log in, and the login is through Open Athens. Open Athens is our new login procedure. For those who are uh, who've been at FU for a while, I mean, we used to have a service called Easy Proxy. But what Open Athens does is it actually allows you to authenticate yourself from outside the library's web page. So if you were coming to access this article, say you did a Google search, you found the article, and it took you to Taylor and Francis from offsite, you could log in. And, and if we have access to that article, you'd be able to find it that way. But yeah, we're, we are going through the FEU uh, platform. We have to log in still. And it's all your FEU net ID. There's no special password creation. That's the ease, the simple complicity of it is to just simply use your FEU net ID. It tells us it's taking me to Taylor and Francis. You can see that up here. So there's our article, the title. Again, there's our abstract, very important. Now, what you see before you is what the article looks like in its HTML format. It has some pictures, which is nice to look at. It's nice to read online. The one thing I will say about this is that it's missing one key component, and that is page numbers. Um, page numbers you will need when you want to cite your work um, using that citation style guy that your pro professor is, uh, wants you to use. But there is no page number. So from here, we'll scroll back up. And now, one thing I will say, from using many different databases, and again, you'll, as you begin to um, move through different databases that we have access to, you'll notice they do look different. Sometimes the PDF icon is over here. Sometimes it's, it'll say download. It won't say even say PDF. In this case, the PDF icon for this particular database is right here. It's green. Simply click here. It will open up into um, Acrobat, uh, Adobe Acrobat, PDF. Um, you can scroll down. And what you have here is an authentic copy of the original uh, article in its purest format. And the most uh, most important thing is you have your page number. So now if you're quoting from this article and you want to go back and, and you need to cite something from it, you have the page numbers. Very important. Also, you can download and save this to a flash drive, to the cloud, to a hard drive on your desktop or laptop computer. And you don't have to, once you do that, you don't have to log back in to access this article. Whereas if you just emailed the link to you, as I mentioned earlier, Every time you try to access it via the database itself, it will request you to require you to log in. So if you bring it up as a PDF, save it, and it's yours to keep until you decide to delete the file. So I'm going to go back to the library, oh, back to the database page one moment. Also inside the database, as we saw with OneSearch in the catalog record, they also have the same concept. You can create a citation within here too as well. So if you forgot to do it within the catalog page, um, you can uh, get your citation here as well. Um, they, they, in this case, this particular database only gives you one option. So again, just be, uh, again, each database is different and I can spend a whole uh, webinar on just showing you different databases and how they look and feel. But this is one of them. So I'm gonna uh, go back to our catalog page, close out of this uh, search here. And let's real quickly, since we have some time, I'll bring up another article real quick. So I just want to see if it does preside as different databases. So here's an example of a different article. Maybe this is an article I need for my research for this topic. Again, there's our citation function, as I mentioned earlier, right there. But in this case, you'll notice where it says view online, there's multiple databases. And what that means is 
a lot of times journals will be um, picked up by different database uh, vendors or and and from here what this means is a user is it just depends on your um, what you like and how it's presented to you. EBSCOhost is one company that has a unique look to it. Project Muse will have a totally different look, as we saw with Taylor and Francis. So when you have multiple options, choose the one option that you're more familiar with so that it makes it easier for you to do your research. There's no, none of these databases are bad databases. They just have different looks and feel to you as a user. So I'm gonna go close this out again, go back to my one search where we have over 8,000 items. One thing I want to point out real quick is you'll notice it says sign in for complete results or request items, or you have a sign in function here. When you sign in, again, you use your FU net ID. The reason why I'm showing you this is uh, for a few reasons, because one, not only can you access your library account and see what uh, books you have, act have checked out, when they're due, you can renew them through your account as well. And the nice thing is, Say if I want this article, you'll see that the pin goes up here. Say I'll take the second article. The name is obviously once you log in is up here. Now from in here, again, I can access my accounts. But anything that you pin either in one search or the catalog, um, not the database, but like one search or the catalog, you can save when you pin it, it goes to your favorites and it shows up right there. So say if I didn't have time to uh, read this article later and I just wanna go back to it uh, and access it later without having to do a whole new search, pin it, save it to your account, and now I can access this anytime I want, wherever I am. Yet if I'm accessing it through a link, they probably will most likely will have to log in. If your system doesn't uh, has forgotten your login, just log in using your FAU net ID, and then you're good to go to use your research. It's very also valuable because you can create folders, save them based on your research if you decide to uh, change that up as well. Um, Larry, I had a question for sure. you. Uh, Ricardo wants to know if you have any recommendations for bibliography tools like Zotero, EndNote, or others. Uh, I do understand that with our catalog as well as with OneSearch, we can uh, move some of the things we see from that into one of our bibliography tools. And for those of you who don't know what they are, basically it's like software that allows you to save all the stuff you find, the, um, the information about the items, it may include links. And then some of them even have the extra feature that if you process, if you're doing word processing on Microsoft Word or even Google Word or, or Google Docs, it will um, enter the bibliographic information and create a bibliography for you. But that's beyond the scope of what we have for today's presentation. But just to go back to the original yeah. question, if so, you had any recommendations. <laughs> um, honestly, I can't recommend any one particular. There they're, they each have their good points and bad points. Um, I'm not familiar, obviously not familiar with um, them enough to, to really go into detail about it. I'm a little bit old school in that nature. I store my things on a flash drive. And I like when I write, I like to write it and, and actually do the citations manually. That's just me. Um, I know some, some of my colleagues swear by Sotero as well as others. And I know also certain uh, programs also prefer EndNote. So again, you know, in that case, I would ask your professor what he or she uses, because since um, they may have a specific one, especially if it's one specifically for a program that you're in, um, because that way they're more familiar with it than um, myself. I know we have resources on it that explains it. Um, the library itself doesn't subscribe to any one of those, so we don't have any of them on the full platform. I know that some of them do offer them as a free, you know, you can download a free version of it. Um, I'll just say that you know, not much because again, I can't re really recommend either one. They're both good. I've seen them demonstrated. I just don't use them. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's, I think that's a pretty honest answer. I mean, I know that the people in the humanities tend to use a certain one, but I do know for sure that those in science, computer science do tend to favor EndNote. Um, if you go to the FAU OIT page, there is a way that you could purchase EndNote for a somewhat reduced price for yourself. Um, but 
But um, yeah, I can just also add that bibliography tools do depend on what you need and want. But um, I know it seems to be something that a lot of people like to use, uh, Zotero. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, in the chat box, I will provide a URL to our library guide on citation tools that are out there. And then you can explore the ones that are out there. And all the links are on one easy page. So I'll do that in just a moment. So, OK, but thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, so take a look at that. I um, mean, those are good resources. Again, and ask your professor, especially in those unique programs, because they've used it a great deal, and they'll and they'll be able to answer more detailed questions if you have an issue with that software. Um, so this was OneSearch. Again, in OneSearch, if I unlimit my uh, uh, amplifiers real quick, my limiters, going back to our original search, you can see over 356, again, 356,000 items, and that's articles, books. If I go to research, um, resource types now, you can just, you can definitely see, I mean, there's everything here, dissertations, reference entries, web resources, news articles, conference proceedings, videos, you can data sets. So using OneSearch can get you a lot of information. But that being said, it can be overwhelming when you see a large number up front. So just remember to set your limiters based on date ranges, if you have a date uh, range, a certain resource type that you want to focus on. Um, and even down to um, a certain um, subject, you know, you can narrow your subject down even further based on even besides the keywords that you put in there. So one search can give you a lot of information. I'm going to go back to the homepage real quick. And now if you're Say you're in a class, your professor wants you to focus on using secondary sources like books. Well, one search as we just saw can find you those books as well. It can be overwhelming. So what I would tell students, and I always tell students, go to the library catalog, do the same search. You know, we'll just do media real quick and violence. And we'll add in children as well, like the magnifying glass. So same keywords we used in one search. Now we're only looking at 269 items, right? These most will be your physical books. So I can access this book online. And, you know, and if it's also, uh, we have government documents in here as well. Now, if you're looking for a physical book, maybe you're the type of, the books available, uh, some of our books are available in both physical and electronic formats for the same title. And you're one of those uh, types of people like myself who like sometimes to hold the physical item. You'll find it here, right? There's the title. Here's the uh, author and the copyright. Oh, when it was published. This is what's gonna tell us what campus it's on. Inside our catalogs, we access, as I mentioned earlier, Jupiter and HBOI campus. And I can't stress enough when you're using both OneSearch or the catalog and you're looking for a book, to make sure you know what campus it's telling you to go to. Because as in the Boca Raton campus, you're gonna find it here in Boca, but I've seen students and I've helped students after they've come back um, and struggled with not being able to find it to look in the catalog and the books in Jupiter. So definitely tells you it's camp, uh, Boca Raton. Anything that says from the general collection is something that you can check out. You can check out all books um, with your OWL card. Your OWL card is not only your student ID, your, uh, you know, the, sometimes you use it to swipe into certain uh, labs or whatever. It's also your, it's used to swipe into the libraries because if, if you haven't been phys into the physical building on campus, we do have security gates that require your OWL card to swipe in. But once you have a book that you want to check out or books, you can check up, uh, up to 500 books at one time. Um, you can check them out at the service desk or we have two self checkouts, but they do require your OWL card. But to find the books on the various shelves, you want to pay close attention to your this Library of Congress number system. It tells you it's in what they, the first two letters will usually tell you what range it's in. So in this case, it's in the HQ section. Once you find HQ, you break it down. You look for HQ 784. Once you find that and you hit the decimal or the point, you'll look for the, the there's usually a letter. So you'll find, and once you get to the M3 section, then you follow the rest of the number. Uh, they're usually located on the spines of the books. If the book is thick enough. If it's a smaller, narrow spine book, it'll be on the front cover of the book. Um, you just have to pull the book out on the shelf as well to see it. Again, that's the Library of Congress number. It's on the general campus. And just like in OneSearch, I can click on the title. And it'll take me into the catalog record. 
Um, again, from here, it gives me a bit of bibliographic information. In some cases, if the book has been reviewed, it will give you a link to book reviews. And you could, I can get the citation style, depending on what style I need. Here it's going to tell you if it's available. In this case, it says it's uh, one copy is available. It's not checked out. Um, if you're an undergraduate, I will say you can check the book up up to three weeks um, and then con continuously renew the book unless a request has been placed. Um, say another student needs the book and um, would like it returned. So what happens is they will not allow you to renew it online. Uh, but undergraduates have it up to three weeks at a time and with new uh, constant renewals available. If you're a graduate student and in the master's or PhD program or faculty or uh, uh, st staff, they have up to six months. This is where it's important for you as a uh, researcher, as a student to realize your time constraints. If this is a book, back to this title real quick, if this is a title I need and say it's not available online and it's checked out, Yes, if it's if it says it's due in three weeks, place a hold on it. Um, then, then what I would suggest doing is go to interlibrary loan, as I showed you earlier. That service, it's a free service. Have them track the book down for you, because if it's also if it's checked out to a graduate student, they have it up to a whole semester. And if you need that book for research, interlibrary loan is your best chance to get another copy of it, so you can use it in your papers, your essays, powerpoints, whatever you need it for. So. If the book is checked out, don't stop there. Turn to the, the next best option, which is interlibrary loan, and you can request that book from another institution. Also gives you, if you scroll down to details, um, gives you more information. Now, not every catalog record is as good as this one is, where it has a, a synopsis of the book. So just be, uh, just understand that. It depends on the catalogers who put the information in or create the record originally. And sometimes these records are created outside of FAU. But another thing I want to point out is when you're in a catalog record, right, when you get down to the subject, you'll see these hyperlinks. I can click on any one of these hyperlinks, and what it will do is take me to an additional search based on those uh, links that I've clicked on. And if there's books, then now I have other books that I could turn to and use for my research as well. And you can see, and here's a good example. The book is, uh, in this case, this Lost Boys, Why Our Sons Turned Violent, is in the Jupiter campus only. Now, if this is a book I need for my research, I can either do one of two options. I can drive up to Jupiter and still check it out because your, your OWL card works on all campuses. Um, but the quick, I mean, unless you really want to go for a drive, request it through interlibrary loan. Um, if it's a book from FAU and you you, you could still get it through, um, get brought down from Jupiter through interlibrary loan, you still have it for the same checkout period, three weeks. And then when you're done with it, you, you don't have to take it back up to Jupiter. You just drop it back off at Boca Raton if that's the campus you checked it out at. And again, do not, do not let us not have a resource or be, it be located on another campus to stop you from doing research. Take advantage of the services that we have. Interlibrary loan is very valuable um, if you so choose to need it. If you don't need it, again, I tell students, that's great. That means at that given moment when you're doing research, we had the resources for you. But if you do need something from another a campus, another library, be it a primary source, a, a secondary document, use interlibrary uh, loan to find the resources. Um, a couple other things I want to point out from this page. From this page, you don't have to always go back to the home page. I have done it for this uh, webinar to show you what it looks like from the launching page. Um, but I can then begin a new search here. Um, I can use these same keywords and then drop the little arrow down here and choose again if I want to look in the library catalog. We have access to the statewide catalogs. So again, those are items that are located at other university uh, libraries um, that you can get through uh, UBORROW and Interlibrary Loan. I just want to look at articles. I can click here. Or if it's something that your professor maybe put as they said they put on course reserves, you can see what's available on course reserves. Um, if you have just a citation, you can click on citation finder, fill out the information, and if it's a, if we have access to it, it'll find it. Again, so you have different ways of, of accessing these resources um, once you're in the platform. You don't always have to go back to the home page like I'm demonstrating now. Okay, Larry, we just to let you know, we have, we're reaching the 10 minute mark. So we got okay. 10 minutes left. So I did just wanted to give you that little, uh, sure. uh, the, 
okay, orientation. Nice. <laughs> so, oh, okay. no worries, no worries. So like I said, use OneSearch. OneSearch will give you everything. Your academic journal articles, newspaper articles, your books. It gives you everything that you have access to. If you do not need it or you want a much smaller number, turn to your library catalog. If you're looking for just books, streaming videos, ebooks, things like that. Now, if you may want to, I'm just going to take you to the database page. I'm not going to demonstrate databases in this webinar. But if you want to use a specific database, click here. If you know the title, you can take like one uh, specific database that I use a lot is JSTOR. But if you're not sure, just click browse. We'll take you to the A to Z database page. You can see you have access uh, in these 672 different databases do feed into OneSearch. And you can see that listed um, A to Z. So you just click on the various letters that you need depending on the, the um, database. And each database will have a, a description of what it um, offers. And these databases, again, if you want a much smaller search, maybe again, you're looking for your academic journal articles and you want a, a smaller search, you don't want to deal with hundreds of thousands, go into the particular database that best fits uh, your subject range. And then you can also narrow it down by subject as well. Um, so that's the databases. Journals if, you, is, if you're looking for a specific journal. Um, and you just type in the journal title. Do not try to find articles through this. This will only find your journals. Um, so things I'll point out real quickly is um, you borrow. This is also opportunity to borrow from anywhere. This is also interlibrary loan. So from the home page, simply click there. It takes you to the interlibrary loan page, which then you can um, um, track. They'll track down the resource that you need regardless of where it's located at and send it to you. Um, if it's an article PDF, it comes to your interlibrary loan account. If it's a physical item, it will go to the library that you chose as your main pickup point. Um, this is where you can renew your books online. And it's also, as I showed you, once you're logged in into your account as well. And I'm trying to think, is any questions out there, Lori? Oh, excuse me, Christy. Uh None so far. Um, one of the questions that, oh, uh, let's see, one person wants to know if they could bring a visitor in the library or if only students are allowed. Um, you can bring a visitor. We are a public institution, so by law, we are we open to the public. Um, when you come in, obviously, they do not have an FAU, net, uh, FAU OWL card to swipe in. What you would have to do is uh, let the service desk know um, and wait, you know, just wave to them because they're right in front of the gates that you have a guest with you um, and they'll open the, the grant them access and they may, they may ask to see your uh, some form of ID. Um, I know that's one of the things that they sometimes do because it just depends on the how busy the library is, but all get public guests are allowed into the building. Um, and from there, they can be if they need to use a computer, they can um, ask the service desk as well and they'll give them a login for the access on the to access to computers because they will have to log into the computer to, to use just even the internet. Okay. Good question. All right, thank you. Um, and uh, we get professors um, that tell their students to use the library a lot. Could you explain uh, why that's usually so? Why to use the library? Yeah. Well, because as we know, the internet itself does not have everything credible. There's a lot of junk on the internet. Professors like to know when, when they're sending their students to do research, one, they can come to a place um, that is safe, a place that is geared towards doing research. Uh, we have many different uh, levels in the library. We have a silent floor on the fourth floor if you prefer perfect silence, but it's a place where you can access all the resources. And then if you need help while you're doing research, you can have access to, you know, again, you can pop into the instruction engagement department and talk to a librarian one-on-one um, -on -one while we're on call. Um, ask a librarian. It's just a place where you can, you know, really allow you to get the services that you need when you're doing research. Well, and what was something that our uh, esteemed um, professor from Palm Beach State would tell us a lot? Um, the one that you worked with a lot, his name slips my mind. Oh, uh, Dr. Ralph Harris. He, yes, yes. As a professor, he always brings his students. I mean, we do classes like this via Zoom now more, more often than not. Um, but he loves to bring his, his students into the uh, library. He wants them to, as he says, to t get dirty with the books, to touch the books, because you can't really do research sometimes unless you're getting into the collections, working with the materials. 
And yes, while a lot of the stuff is online, you can access this again. The, what we're looking at right now is the library's home page. Home, this is the library online. But you can't really, a lot of the resources that we have access to, and we have over a million books, um, you can't access those unless you're physically in the library to check them out, to look at them. And sometimes you take, you know, you go up to a second floor and you have your call number. And then you start to look around the books around each side of that call number and you find other titles that didn't show up in the original search. So if there's something about being in the building that uh, lends to uh, academic research. Um, I, I think, and, and it's also one of the, I think, if, Christy, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think the library is one of the most uh, busiest buildings in, on campus. And not even include, not even including, not even including Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, that's just, we have students that come in here to do research. Some students will come in at 7.40 in the morning when they fully open to um, stay till closing at midnight. And again, if you need to know what hours we have, our hours are always posted on the webpage, 7.40 to 12 a.m. And if I click here, you can see, break it down by date, as well as the other departments. And you can also see Jupiter and HBOI. Again, um, another thing that's important is, again, if you need help, I know I said a lot in this uh, webinar, and if you remember everything, fantastic. You're that much closer <laughs> to getting your A in your product. If you remember 10%, good enough. Um, but if there's one thing I want you to really remember, is remember that we're here to help you. And if you're not sure how much help you can obtain, click help. You can see, you can do ask a librarian. So from here, you can text us a question. You can chat with us live you know, from nine to five. You can even email us a question. I say, I always tell students when you email us a question, give us at least 24 to 48 hours to get back with you so we can make sure our response is not uh, is written in a way that you can understand and, and the resources we're able to provide you. Um, we're here to help you. Uh, most important as far as help is research consultation. This form here, click on that link, you fill out this form. Basically, you're gonna set up an appointment one-on-one -on -one with one of the librarians, either in person coming into our office, obviously with COVID, that's a little bit different right now. We can do a phone con uh, conference as well as an online Zoom. And Zoom is just like I'm doing now. I'm sharing my computer screen to your computer screen. You could be anywhere, somewhere in the state of Florida, you could be doing study abroad, wherever. And I can show you the resources that you have at your disposal. I can help you navigate them. I can help you narrow your topic, broaden your topic, things like that. I always say the professors in the classroom are there to teach you the subject matter, the theories behind the stuff you're studying. It's our job in, at FE Libraries, especially in the Instruction Engagement Department, to, to show you the resources that you have at your disposal, the services that you have access to, to help you facilitate earning those grades that you want and being successful here at FEU. All right, well, thank you, Larry. I didn't see any other questions in the chat. Um, so if I may share my screen, and if you still have any questions, let I us know. Um, one person wanted to know where the office is located. You can get assistance at any FAU library service desk, but Larry's office and my office in particular are going to be located on the first floor east wing of the Boca Raton Campus Library. So that's where you can get in touch with us. Okay, so thanks for that question there, how you can find us. Now, for those of you who want to take the certificate, who need the certificate, the Library Research 101 quiz is available at this URL. Um, and you could also use your phone or your device if it has a QR reader to get to the particular quiz. The results will be sent within a few minutes. So it's just an automatic quiz with 10 minutes, uh, with 10 questions. A certificate will be sent for answering eight out of the 10 questions, and you can take it as many times as you'd like. So you should get it within a couple minutes that you take the quiz. And of course, if you need to go to the library webpage to get answers, you could do that too, or use our Ask a Librarian service as well. Um, so the that quiz is, is there. Uh, sorry, what's that, Larry? I'm going to say it's like uh, that game show. So a phone a friend, you can chat with a librarian. And I'll also add the link in the chat too that you can get to it. 
And then I wanted to give a very shameless plug. <laughs> we'll be having more library events this month. On Thursday, February 3rd at 4 p.m., we'll be having the literature review, a roadmap. So for those of you who are graduate students or new to do a literature review for your thesis and dissertation, you can come to this presentation. Uh, it's gonna be a webinar to get information how to do that. Later in the month, we'll be having a copyright and fair use webinar where you can learn about the basics, facts, and myths about copyright in this 50-minute webinar. It will be held on Tuesday, February 22nd at 12 o'clock and also 4 o'clock p.m. So there'll be the same presentation just offered for those who can't get there or to one of them. And then finally, we'll be having an in-person event, Copyright Criminals. We will be showing a documentary and having a discussion on sampling and hip hop music. So this 50 minute documentary goes into some hip hop artists from when hip hop really made the mainstream in the mid late 80s and talked about the fair use and other lawsuits that they encountered at a discussion on all that. That's gonna be on Wednesday, February 23rd in the university boardroom fifth floor of the Boca Raton Campus Library. To register, you can visit that URL um, and you could also check out that QR code to get to that information. And again, if you need to take the quiz, I posted the bit.ly link in the, in the uh, chat so you can get to it. All right, well, were there any final questions for Larry or for myself? And I'll post that quiz just one more time. <laughs> okay, I don't see any questions in the chat. Uh, thank you, Aftkar, uh, for coming yeah, in today. Well, yeah, well. We didn't we didn't get a chance to say hello to you. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Tanessa for helping us get all this set up, and especially to Larry for giving all this information. Likewise, thank you guys for attending. It was a great webinar, and like I said, if you have questions. Look us up, come into the building in Boca Raton, check us up on Ask a Librarian, or just shoot us an email. We're here to help you guys do the best yeah. you can while you're here at FAU. Thank yes. you. All right. Thank you all, and have a good day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.